we've all been there. You're playing your favorite racing game. Favorite racing game? I honestly don't know a single person in real life who plays racing games. Come to think about it, I don't even have a single online friend that plays racing games. Now, I know that there's supposedly a pretty big market for racing game fans out there, but I kind of look at them as mythical legends. For example, the Loch Ness Monster or sane German people. You know, time to time people start talking about it existing, but you can't really prove it because you never find anything. And, and that's how I look at racing game fanatics. Going at not so legal speeds, only to crash at a corner and think to yourself, Bruh, I wasn't even going that fast. Except you were. This is true for a good chunk of racing games, especially for hardcore simulators, such as Assetto Corsa, iRacing, and most of all, Gran Turismo. I have heard about Corsa and Gran Turismo, but I have my doubts about anyone's sanity who plays racing simulators. You know, like plane simulator where you literally need to uh, press 50 boopty loopties to actually do something, but I understand that part because you know it's not ex exactly most likely cheap to get, uh, learn to drive a plane in real life, you know, and it's most likely not exactly cheap to uh, get a plane to drive in the real life after you get the license to drive the plane. So, I kind of understand the reason be behind uh, flying sims, but racing sims. Can't you just, like, I don't know, uh, go get a driver's license or something, not literally buy half the car without the wheels, so you can pretend that you're in a car? I, I, I just don't get it. Gran Turismo 6 was my first actual racing game. What a way to start, eh? And I remember really liking the game for its graphics, track selection, and the sheer amount of cars you could mess with. Like, coming from Mario Kart, that shit was next level for me. But when driving... My dude, <laughs> you don't play Mario Kart for the cars. You play Mario Kart for fucking over your friends and being an asshole. I always felt that something was off, that it felt kind of underwhelming. But then one day I went to a friend's house and well, that lucky bastard had a PS4. Cool. By the way, sorry for the muye law. But anyways, the point is, he introduced me to Drive Club. And holy sh** was that the complete opposite of what Gran Turismo felt like. Yes, yes, Drive Club- Wait, so, is it good or is it bad? I can't tell. Drive Club is more of an arcade racing game, but just look at the difference. Like- I I'm not gonna, gonna lie, I- I can't actually see the difference. That evening, I fell asleep. Oh, this is Grand fast. Turismo. Oh, not fast. But why exactly do some racing games feel slow? Initially, I thought that it had to do with FOV. But the more I look... Yeah, I feel the fa uh, view is probably the first thing that co uh, comes uh, to anyone's mind. If anyone has ever changed field of view, you instantaneously uh, can see a difference in how uh, fast you think you suddenly become. It's it's like the number one thing, probably. looked into it, the more I realized that there's so much more that goes into giving the sense of speed. So it is now time to go into Watch Mojo Mode, oh. where I will list the top five ways of conveying I can't actually think of any reasonable other way than FOV to... Oh, motion blur. Yeah, motion blur. Okay, so those are the two obvious ones, and after that I actually have no idea. The sense of speed in racing games. Keep in mind that this is mostly based on opinion, and you have all the rights, as a Karen thinks she has, to disagree with me. Damn. Well, let's start with the obvious. FOV. Yeah. So, it is true that the one of the FOV, the more it seems like you're He's going He's driving fast. a bus. Just look at this comparison. Oh, that's so bad. It is a little extreme, Whoa. but still, it proves- Yeah, 
I remember I remember changing the FOV first time in Counter Strike 1.6, and man, I thought like I'm super bad. I thought for a moment that I found speed hacks that were legit in the game. Turns out, no, not really. And turns out, yeah, FOV uh, changing FOV to this for Counter Strike, not exactly a competitive gamer move right there. Is the point. For example, in Mexican Forza Horizon, I play with the far camera instead of the regular one. Oh, that looks good. And yes, it does feel faster. Next up, motion blur. No need for words here. Actually, I honestly hate motion blur for most games. Let me plug some shit in the meantime. Up top, you'll see channel members, and if you do want to support the channel, like and your subscribe, name in my videos, and use my horrible emojis during streams, make sure to press the join button. Also, make sure to join my shitty Discord server, as well as all my Twitch, I haven't even linked I am that. planning on also streaming there soon. And finally, if you're enjoying this, I invite you to like, like and subscribe. No, and comment, Anyways, and comment, oh, that up. matters. I feel like he's about to crash. What? what? Feels like he's going fast. Still feels like he's going fast. I'm sorry, but I I have no idea what I literally have no idea what's happening here. Then there's the camera. This is the main problem with the racing sims. The camera doesn't move. It's actually not as bad in Gran Turismo as it is, for example, in a Sado Corsa. Like, in that game, the camera is... I don't know if you want a moving camera. For example, you know how the camera always stays pretty much static in any MMO that you play? So there was this cool MMO that I really, really, really loved called Anarchy Online. And it had the thing that you could move the camera and it would stay locked in that position. And there was no real way to put it on the default position again. So... Anytime you were off-center, you just hated your life. Until you got it perfectly, so when you run straight, you're, you're actually looking straight. It was painful, man. It, it, it's just some of the most painful memories I have, honestly. It's nothing but a massive pile of shit. It stays still when you turn. It stays still when you break. You can't fucking orbit it around the car. In third person, you have no idea what the fuck your vehicle is doing. It's so bad that it makes me motion sick. First person is decent, but you know, some people also- I can't do first person when I'm playing a game where you drive cars. It just, it just feels awkward, man. Enjoy looking at the car's ass while driving it. Also, camera shake and the distance of the camera relative to your car should be an option in all racing games. Camera shake may be cringe and shit, but it does make you feel like you're going- Oh, that well. kind of camera shake is pretty bad. And having the camera lag behind the car when you accelerate conveys an incredible sense of power. A game franchise that has done this really well is Need for Speed. Yep. Even though it has kind of sucked to everyone. Yep. I played Need for Speed. Let's face it, everyone played Need for Speed, so that's an exception to the rule that no one plays uh, racing car games. You know, Tokyo Drift and all of that jazz? Man, when you actually started from the finish line, that was great. That was absolutely great. That is one of my top two actually feelings when I drive a car, because I actually have these, believe it or not. And the second one is in GTA V. You know, GTA 5 has pretty good driving, I would say, but GTA 5 has the absolute peak pleasure spot where you can drive with a car. And that is from the main starting city to the military base, through the tunnel and bridge. Well, over the bridge and through the tunnel. When you get on the bridge, there uh, in the middle, you have a completely free a place to accelerate the mu as much as you can and in that middle you have these small little uh, danger zones or whatever it's called that you can knock over oh and that feels just so satisfying going uh, going over that bridge 
when you see everything open, you're going fast and you're knocking those things down and into the tunnel. Well, the tunnel kind of sucks, but the bridge part is absolutely amazing. I, I every time I need to, uh, every time I needed to go uh, up or down the map, I would choose that place just because that one moment. It was amazing. It's still amazing. In particular, Need for Speed Pro Street feels quick in a rather unhealthy way. I mean, just look at this. Wow. I That's acknowledge the fact bad. that hardcore sim racers, hate thrills, and a camera shake could make them miss the apex by a few centimeters or some shit. But having the option to enable <laughs> disable these features. Fucking. Why the apex? I, I'm literally lost. What's the apex in a racing sim? would make it so that everyone gets what they want. Moving on, a girlfriend? Sound. Nah. This may have been kind of unexpected, but hear me out. Let's say that you get kidnapped. And this is how it's done. Shoved in the trunk of a first gen Mercedes A class and blindfolded. Okay, that, that, that's, that's pathetic. Okay, if you get kidnapped in a car that looks like this, uh, you, you better hope that they are going to end your life. Because even if the police find and rescue you, you will never live down the shame of for getting kidnapped by people who would drive a car like this. A absol absolutely emotionally breaking stuff. ...and blindfolded. Question, how do you tell how fast you're going? It's probably wind noise. No? Or just the feeling of the car rolling up. You wouldn't believe how affected a good and especially nice. loud wind noise would be at making you feel like you're going fast. That would probably get super annoying. And on top of that, a good Doppler effect and washing sound. Oh, Doppler effect! I know what that is. I know what that is. Uh, it is an effect when the source of sound is moving towards you. Now, I don't remember was was it specifically fast or slow, but that is when the source of sound is moving towards you. Yeah, big brain smart. For that, a good Doppler effect. And I don't remember though why I know that, but I know that for some reason. Washing sounds for objects you speed past, just augment the feeling of speed. Here, the argument that it would affect the cornering ability of hardcore sim racers is just non-existent. So please, can we go from the this fuck is that? To this? No. Okay, maybe. That honestly sounds really bad. Turn it down a bit. Perfect. Is it? Is it? And finally, there's road wideness. Huh. The wideness, or rather, the tightness of the roads has, in my opinion, the strongest effect in making you I never considered that, honestly. Feel like you're going fast. This isn't really addressable in the majority of racing sims, since, well, you're always driving on racetracks, and it's not like the developers can just tighten the- Wait, I have an epiphany. Remember how I said about GTA 5 knocking down the things? It feels good because you, you get a sense of speed from knocking down those things. So, couldn't you actually fix this problem in racing sims or games when you just create scale? When you see something for on, I don't know, uh motorway lines or whatever they're called in English, you know, those things, where, where you just pass them and you see yourself zip right past them real fast, I think that would give weight to cars, I think that would give you a sense of speed, or, you know, maybe like small shrubs or bushes at the side, you know, that, you know, that are distinguishable and you see yourself zip past them. Yeah, that, I think that could work. I should probably patent this idea that's probably that's genius them race tracks are wide by design so that you know you can actually race on them so yeah, all case, right. you're gonna have everyone to... watches nascar only for the crashes let's be real resort to the other methods i've spoken about also if you can think of other methods to convey the sense of speed please let me know in the comments because i'm stupid and i probably missed something but for open world racing <laughs> games such as forza horizon 
which to be fair does Open feel world. kind of slow as another youtuber called jake mb oh says, this actually yeah this feels good because you can you you can actually understand how fast you're going judging by the building zipping fast his video regarding the subject nice. this could really bring them to the next yeah and step. here it's actually show oh maybe oh <laughs> I, I guess someone already figured out my genie. Well, I'm not going to be a millionaire after selling my secrets to racing games now. Shit. I was kind of actually hope... I was kind of happy that I, 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 I got a big brain idea there. <laughs> for the moment. Level. I'm aware of the fact that having completely faithful road dimensions would be shit for playability. But come on, do highway lanes really need to be that fucking wide? This is why GTA 5 feels... That is true. Highway lanes aren't actually that wide most of the time in real life. Because concrete costs money. And an easy way to make a lot of money for yourself if you're a gov uh, corrupt government official is to, well, uh, not make roads too wide. Because that's how you save money. Fucking quick. Even though the fastest cars can be... Wait, that's the bridge! Yeah, this is the bri This is from the other side, I think. Yeah, no, is this from the other side? But yeah, this is the bridge. Th this is the mid lane I was talking about. And there at the distance, at the st very st No, yeah, this is from the other side, yeah. I Yeah, this is from the other side. No, so you need to be from the other side. On this side, I don't think there were any pins that you could knock down. But from the other side, there uh, there's these uh, rows of pins. I think there was like three rows of pins or something. And that shit feels great. The fastest cars can barely reach 200 kilometers per hour. And it's not like Damn. you can't race in that game. So you can confidently say that something in between real life road dimensions and the current Forza Horizon white boys would be the best of both worlds. But why? Why care so much about the sense of speed? Is it just so that 12-year-old Muya doesn't fall asleep while playing Gran Turismo 6? Maybe? Well, actually yes, but not entirely. <laughs> right now, I am in the process of getting a driver's license, and every time I get behind the wheel, it feels kind of scary. Even I'm just going at 30 km <laughs> per hour. That's because of the intrinsic risks Damn. of driving. Anything could go wrong. This Damn. may sound slightly pessimistic, and it is, but it's actually kind of good to be at all afraid of something. It makes. I think everyone's afraid uh, of driving for the first time or whatever. You know, the first time you get in the car with a driving instructor and you're supposed to drive, shit, shit, shit's a little bit intense, I'm not gonna lie. And my dad taught me to drive pretty early on, so um, still, still kind of fucking felt intense, not gonna lie. Makes your heart be faster, it releases them good brain chemicals, dopamine girls like so much. Fun is good, but kind of scary <laughs> fun is even better. Just the take roller coasters as an example. Ooh. The sketchier and f I love roller coasters. Roller coasters are amazing. And yeah, the sketchier, the better. The more unexpected twists and turns where you think, oh, gonna go off the rails. This is, this is GG no re, boys. Ah, oh, man. If you have not done roller coasters, you should. If you have not done the thing that gets you really high in the air and then drops you, you should. Those things are absolutely fantastic. And yes, I am a little bit afraid of heights, so I felt double the fantastic when you get down and your legs feel like, oh my god, that's so good. The faster they are, the more fun you have until you wake up in an emergency room. You don't really have this feeling yeah. while playing most racing Lord. games. Like, what's the worst that could happen to you? Another good thing about having a solid sense of speed is knowing your car's limits. This is also linked to realism. If drivers knew nothing would happen to them if they yoinked to their car into a wall, we'd have some seriously impressive lap time records. This is why sure. Bungie Drive, which is an open world sandbox game, actually terrifies you when you're going above 200 kilometers per hour. When you're really immersed in the driving, the mere knowledge that you could potentially end up wrapped I have never been immersed in driving. ...around <laughs> that tree makes you feel things that... But, I will tell you this. I actually did it coincidentally today. So, <clears throat> there's this one really, really good road. Where it's a little bit hilly. It's a lot of ups and downs. It's a lot of, uh, you know, 
uh, pr pretty minute turns and shit, and, co and cops usually don't drive there. Man, it feels so good to go on high speed, legal speed, I mean, completely legal speed. Completely legal, it feels so good to drive there. And coincidentally, I had to actually uh, drive to that part of my country today, and I, and I went through there. Man, it felt good. And the road is not perfect. It's a little bit bumpy, you know, the, the most smallest of bumps. And that just gives, uh, that, that's just a good sense. And I'm not someone who enjoys actually driving. I dislike driving for the most part. But the, that place even made me like driving. Most of the racing games just can't. This is also why GTA V, despite its slow ass cars, feels a lot more engaging than proper racing simulators. And they're actually not that's slow. The fact. They never, they, yeah, I, well, I guess he has a point. They never feel slow, but I guess they are kind of slow. They can also yeep in it. Anyways, uh, sorry for the various tangents. I just want racing games to scare the shit out of me. Um, yeah, that sounds reasonable, honestly. Okay, anyway, uh, like and subscribe. This was pretty fun.